కొంచెం వాటర్ అక్కడే ఉంది Good morning. There are only two candidates today. By the way, do you listen to me? Okay. Good morning. Yes. Good. So without uh, wasting much time, let me get into the concept. Today, I would like to put full stop to this uh, these sessions. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, ANOVA and later a little bit of regression and then straight away I proceed to factor analysis. So I hope all of you must have studied uh, my material which I will share through email. Uh, so let's, first let me take up the discussion you know, ANOVA. Let me take up the topic ANOVA for the discussion. And I think this is there in page number, let me have to go to answer various so here there is a lot of information like what is ANOVA, experiments and all these things. Um, mostly, I mean, whenever we talk about ANOVA, ANOVA refers to experimental research. So people will do some experiments and come back and that is why ANOVA is regarded as darling of statisticians because most of the statistics is used in bioinformatics, medicine, where the medical experts will try to do experiments on medicine I mean subjects, they use medicine, they do some trials on their subjects and record the observations and then come back and do some statistical analysis. Now here you see there are two types of study, observation study and experimental study. Uh, in business management, we mostly, mostly the experiments are not allowed. I mean, we're very late. Very rarely we go for the experiments, but there are there's a lot of uh, utility. As far as, as the observation studies are concerned, we really use them like anything. Uh, just like uh, as a matter of example, uh, more, uh, the observation studies are done in uh, retired industry where the purchasing habits of the consumers are recorded without disturbing the consumers when they are purchasing. Goods. In the same fashion, uh, you know, in healthcare, the patients, uh, I mean, uh, data is recorded from the patients without, without uh, interviewing or asking them questions. So, day by day, day to day information can be. But this uh, healthcare example comes under both observation and experiment because the medical practitioners can do experiments on medicine, they can take records and so, so this ANOVA, either way, I mean observation or experiment, we need to have some data and from here onwards what happens actually, um, we'll be having data, one of the variables will be dependent, another variable will be, must be, it's not will be, one of the variables must be dependent variable, the other variable must be independent. But till now, as long as we are studying the key uh, statistic or at least I'm sorry, I didn't uh, share the textbook with you, I guess. So I just uh, keep on pointing. Let me share the textbook. This is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about experiments. There are observation studies and uh, experimental studies. So till now, uh, in key test and uh, chi square test, we usually don't talk about which one is dependent, which one is independent. By the way, I was when I studied my aesthetic class, I was trying to talk uh, about uh, ANOVA. And I got into this concept. Uh, the video was uh, uh, stopped. So I, I assume my aesthetic, this is actually the continuation of the aesthetic class. So in ANOVA, what happens? Uh, when we have uh, one time, so there are two points in ANOVA. The LNCs are going to have uh, 
So there are there is LHS at left hand side and right hand side of the equation, and in left hand side we have usually the variable which is in left hand side is called as dependent variable, and the variables that are there in right hand side are called uh, dependent variables. In other words, the left left hand side variable is regarded as uh, uh, regressive, and right hand side variables are regarded as uh, predictors. So this is actually the theory. The shortest way, I mean, this is all actually the very turn around exam, I mean, description. If I want to talk to you in, in short, precisely, in very concise way, the ANOVA is a F test carried on multivariate um, table. In, in the sense, like uh, it is a F test on a cross test. Suppose if you have uh, different variables um, so in t-test what happens you don't have the cross test okay it is uh, straightforward to vertically presented uh, data variables even in, in chi-square you have a cross test so the ANOVA is actually the combination of parametric and non-parametric techniques so t-test is parametric technique in which uh, case you should have the numeric and totally continuous data even if you have the categories you need to i mean i didn't actually talk to you that case i only told you how to carry out the t-test on single variable and two different variables there is also a formula way in t-test you can just uh, t dot test uh, x1 uh, tilde so in r what happens wherever you put the formula where uh, i think uh, let me take you to r uh, with the help of an example, like say, we, suppose if you have x1 a variable, so you can carry out t test, okay? The x1 tilde, we use tilde x2. This is a formula. I didn't actually talk to you this, I just told you x1, comma x2. That is how we discussed, uh, you know, t test in, in my earlier class. But you can also represent the so if you are using this, this is almost equal to ANOVA. If you use t test like this, it is almost like an over. So here we are actually, the x1 should be, suppose, if you, if I have to explain this to you as an over, the x1 can be dependent variable, x2 can be independent variable, so something like that. So from ANOVA onwards, till t test, usually we don't talk about the formulas, but from ANOVA, we'll be talking about formulas. So here, both of them should be, I mean, numeric, and x1 need to be continuous, which means ratio, and x2 should be carried. So x2 plus x3, you can have a number of, uh, you know, variables, till the xn. But here x1, x1 is numerical ratio, and x2 is categorical and numerical. So I don't know if it is non-numerical, maybe or it has a lot of uh, mechanisms inside, even if you use a, uh, non-numerical data should be able to now what happens in ANOVA there is a function called AOV this is analysis of variance and here you have to mention the formula so from here onwards the formula method starts from ANOVA onwards we have the formulas in R so here we have to uh, issue the data so the data of the data now let us go back to the textbook and see what is there in the textbook now here two, two sample t-test started from, I mean, the where two sample t-test ends, there ANOVA starts, because ANOVA need to have, now th this is actually the methodology, you, are, you have, so you need to satisfy the normality, because by definition t-test is a normal, normal distribution, t-distribution is a normal distribution, there is no meaning in doing t-test if your data is uh, non-normal, you have to prove that 
by the way there are quite a few you know statistical techniques in uh, r to test normality of the data one of the famous tests is shabiro i have to add because it is unending if i i don't know i i am sure i will not be able to so you you have to study all these things shapiro shapiro test and you you can just uh, give uh, a variable here like or now i just take or now just as a matter of an example so this is how if your p value is close to uh, 1 then your this is actually you see i take it i created the data from the normal distribution so obviously it should be normal so the shapiro test sh says that the data is actually the normal if the p value is close to 1 it is normal so there are many things in r you can do uh, we cannot be able to discuss each and everything there is also ks test kolmogorov's mino test this is another robust test or norm no r norm is just some data some kind of since i don't have why is it this is a bivariate normality or norm then suppose if you have two different uh, variables x1 and x2 just like you know data data of uh, x1 uh, is equal to or norm then and uh, x2 is equal to or norm then i am just uh, you know simulating data set that's all you see here you have uh, x1 x2 if this is the data set then you can use the same data set to how do you test the normality ks bivariate normality ks test then you can use x1 uh, now you x1 is x2 is not x2 is not x1 is or norm x2 is or norm yeah so you don't need that so if that is the data set like you have two different variables then you can just uh, carry out that uh, you know normal data set this way you see here since we have taken both of them from the normal distribution obviously it should be normal so p value supports the null hypothesis that both these x1 and x2 are bivariate normal now this data set data frame which are used for this case test is uh, so like this there are many things which you can do in r but uh, unfortunately i am not uh, i don't have the time to discuss with you all these things so first you have to prove that your data is normal then only you can go for the either one variable i mean univariate t test or bivariate t test i mean two sample t test one sample t test or two sample t test now here uh, there is anova example and this is actually t test uh, you see there is a data set called melatonin uh, it is studied uh, uh the effect of drug over uh, the sleep of the subjects for two different groups one control group the other one is a treatment group control group is uh, you know it is called uh, uh what is say that dummy medicine there is a name for that uh, see well, there are two groups control and treatment and the control group is a group to whom the medicine is not served and the treatment group is a group to whom the medicine is served so the melatonin is a drug which is served for the treatment group and it is not served for the so that is a there is a name in medicine if you don't serve the anybody if you know the dummy capsule is served there is a question madam i already discussed the, the difference between the t test and anova the t test is actually the uh, text ca test carried on uh, numeric non categorical data anova is carried on it is actually a t test over a cross test that is the difference the shortest difference is the t test is a test of numeric non categorical data and anova is a test carried out on numeric Categorical data, which means a cross tab. A t test for cross tab is ANOVA. That is what is the distinction between. For t test, you are going to have numeric variables. Uh, both of them should be numeric and non-categorical. But you know this is not true uh, in industry. Many people, I mean, today t test is also used on categorical data, but it should be numerical. But whenever you have a cross tab, then you can go for. You cannot do the t test for cross tab. Cross tab. You have to go for the chi square test. chi square test is non parametric if you want to perform the parametric test on a cross tab then anova is only the way that is how 
it all based on the type of the data okay see here actually you got uh, sleep uh, you know ratio based the interval data or ratio data in group you have categories now what happens this is actually uh, it is normal data but uh, not the chi square test cannot be used because this is you know normal data we have to go for a parametric test which means as a t test or f test in anova we perform f test that is why we go for the a categorical data which is possibly a cross tab where you want to employ some parametric test that is uh, the utility of uh, you know anova but but chi square where if uh, your data is uh, non normal then you can go for chi square run there are many uh, wilcoxon test man white me wilcoxon test and uh, you know ku uh, scale gamma test there are many non parametric test if your data is categorical and a cross tab you want to employ the parametric test then you have to go for the uh, anova so that's how i can explain now you see here the melatonin here the t test is used you see the the mu mean value of the control group is equal to mean value of the treatment that is null hypothesis and you see here there is a two sample data t test sleep you see here there is a formula like this it is actually equal to anova in r when you use t test over uh, the left side variable dependent variable is continuous and uh, the right side i mean independent variable is uh, categorical then this t test is obviously an anova whether you do it or not it is going to be in anova we do the f test but in t test there will be t, t, t statistic now there, there is a box plot kind of thing you see here you can see the differences difference between these two groups control versus treatment i have one uh, uh data with me let me show you i just simulated a data set here you see the melatonin uh, I, I i simulated a data set melatonin and let's see what is there here melatonin you see the same kind of it it mimics like the textbook data but it is different you see you have sleep and the group now suppose you want to perform some t test t test now you can go for sleep formula i mean sleep depends on group now what happens is uh, i mean i cannot give sleep depends on group i can use t apply uh, melatonin and then uh, you have uh, sleep uh, depends on mel melatonin group now this is actually a t test there is some sort of uh, written sleep uh, melatonin is a melatonin melatonin okay so invalid type list we can't it is telling us that you know list cannot be used yes now you see the t, t statistic now the same thing suppose if you want to do the f test is rupture because this is melatonin 2 is a group it is not uh, let me show you t apply sorry t apply this is a melatonin and then uh, yeah you have sleep now i am just trying to inquire for the group means and then mean you see there are groups for count the mean is 8.81 for experimental group the mean is 0.63 now you can go for the box plot box plot having known the means we can test the difference the mean difference is actually the median difference uh, i can instead of t apply i can say box plot okay now cool let's take uh, two different uh, I blue and then I take uh, maybe can I take uh, blue now uh, border border is equal to blue now let's see if we get uh, yeah I see here we got uh, there is a lot of difference you know the difference is sky blue is not blue 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, find function is, oh my. Uh, I'm doing a lot of things. Here. This idea. Um, or black, I think it should, we'll leave it black. The class, we're not able to see. Okay. Yeah, you'll see here the difference between the medians. This, this thick black lines are medians. The, the difference, I think it is significant. Now you say, what is the p-value here? It is not, it shows, uh, it, it, the difference is not significant. The p-value is above 0 0.05. So at 5% significance level, the difference is not significant. Both of the means are same. But uh, I will, I, the visual shows some little difference. But that difference, whichever we are seeing in the, in the diagram, is not statistically significant. As per statistics, it is not significant. Though there is some difference, but that is not significant, which means it's not important, kind of thing. So let's go back to, say like this, I keep talking about, uh, we have many things to do. I think, what is the time? It is 10.25. So let's go back. And uh, now this is, uh, uh, yeah, one way ANOVA, which means there is one, only one factor. If you have one factor versus the other, dependent, one dependent variable, the other one is the factor. That is one way ANOVA. Right now we did something that is one way over. Now there is see this is actually the ANOVA table. You are going to have the between, within, SSD, sum of squares between, sum of squares for within, and degrees of freedom, mean squared uh, error. This is actually between error and within error, or between variance. It is just uh, you see here we have SSD is uh, actually the variance, the error, the the difference between. The means and within the difference between each value to that of a group mean. Now we have mean squared error and f statistic. See the ANOVA actually performs f test. So let's do that. Now let's go where we have that uh, melatonin data which is simulated by me. This is simulated data. So melatonin head. head. Melatonin. You see how six sleep and all. A O V now melatonin. So please be cautious, we have to use numbers. We can't use the names of the because these are all numerical methods. Or now okay, data is equal to melatonin. There's no need. Operator is not uh, is an atomic vectors. So here it is saying that um, ah, okay. I think we have to use, uh, no, I think uh, we can use a comma on this. Okay. So we have to use the formula method. As I, I told you we have to use the formula method, but unknowingly I used a comma here. You cannot use comma. You have to use formula. So at MOV, we have to tell that there is a dependent variable and independent variable. The very first variable, the variable which is left hand side of the tilde. So this is this symbol is tilde. The LHS should be the dependent variable, or it should be independent variable. So melatonin one, which is sleep, depends on group. Now, yeah, sleep depends on group, yes, of course. So after melatonin is served, then uh, there, there are differences. Sleep-wise differences are significant. That is what is the assumption. Now, some of squares, you see here, these are the sum of squares for melatonin too, and some of, I mean, these are the residuals, but you know, you will not be able to understand this. And there are degrees of freedom, one comma 28, but these results are not uh, important for us. We use summary method. Summary, uh, we have to save that as a fit. We have to save that as an object. Repeatedly doing mistakes. I hit, no, fit. You see the same, same result. Now what we do, summary, we'll get the ANOVA table. If you want to get ANOVA table, you have to use summary fit. You see, it is exactly like ANOVA table. You got uh, between, within, residuals are within, this is between, degrees of freedom. Uh, these are, uh, yeah, this is this is between, sum of squares, SSB, SSW, degrees of freedom, and then you have mean squared error, mean squared. Which is nothing but the 0 0.228 divided by 1. That is what is the mean squared. 
and 7.723 divided by 28. That is what is 0.27. Now, when you divide the 0.2276 with 0.275, I'll show you. So anyway, obviously, 0 0.228 divided by 1, that is going to be 0 0.228. Now, let us see this. Okay. Shall we divide this uh, with uh, 28 and see what is the value? You see that is 0 0.2758. And now 0, 0, 0.2276 divided by, and now this value. Okay, let's see what is that value. Is there. See, I'm dividing these two values. Now that is going to be 0.8252 for this one. Now that is what is the F. When you divide the mean squared error between with mean squared error within that yields f value this f statistic that is what is actually the protocol of ANOVA. now this is uh, simply the p value for this f value so we have to find that with uh, p f okay there is a function called p f just like in t test we find with p t so this value comes with p f function now anyway that is not important for us when you look at the p value so obviously it is very clear it is greater than 0 0.05 so if the value is greater than 0 0.05 we fail to reject the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? The group-wise differences are not statistically significant. Just like, you know, let me, I don't know if I can uh, stop sharing. So let me open this, uh, uh, my page. Uh, now I have to share. Come on. So only for ANOVA we spent all this, uh, where is my page? Yeah, here actually the null hypothesis is going to be, I think you should be able to see my whiteboard, right? The mu value for uh, sleep is equal to mu value for uh, group. So this is actually the null hypothesis. The, the group wise mean values are equal, which means the difference between these two values is not statistically significant. Now what happens the p value is, so let me tell you if the p, this is actually threshold value. So we have 0 0.05. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then you have evidence in support of alternate hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, you have the evidence in support of your null hypothesis. That is actually the mantra. The entire, this is what is called decision making. This is the entire activity is called as decision making or inference. And this is actually the hypothesis for an hour. Okay, now let's go back to this uh, R studio. So what is the p-value here? The p-value is 0 0.371, which is greater than 0 0.05. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And we conclude that the difference between the group-wise differences, the difference between these two groups and the control versus experimental is not statistically significant. So they are, both of them are more or less same. I mean, they're not same actually. Let's go back again, p-apply, uh, ml uh, one and Domain. Two. Now mean. So what is the mean value for these two groups? You see here 0 0.81, 0 0.63. There is difference. You see even in our uh, chart, there is some difference. But whatever the difference that we are observing, that is just a matter of sampling. It is not true error. As far as the statistical test is concerned, this error, whatever we are trying to, the difference, whatever we are trying to perceive from the sample may not be a true difference. And that is not a true difference in the population. That is how this is just a, the difference within the sample. So that's the difference cannot be observed in the population. This is how we determine, perform the ANOVA on underlying data. So I explained you how to perform the ANOVA by using a data set and I 
simulated the data set. It's not a true data set. Uh, it will take a lot of time to me to download and use that data set. Uh, to use it for uh, statistical analysis, that is why I just simulated within this R studio and explain. Now, thoroughly, let us go to the regression. Regression is a very big topic. It is not possible for me to explain within uh, a class or two. And I'm trying to explain that within uh, a couple of minutes, but which, which is not good, actually. So actually, I thought of uh, explaining you the factor analysis. I doubt. So here you have simple linear regression. There are two types of uh, regression. One is simple linear regression. The other one is multiple regression. If you have, if you are trying to fill the regression between two variables, y and x, that is simple linear regression. Simple linear regression. It's not non-linear. There are two types of regression techniques: linear regression, non-linear regression. In R, we use GLM. There is a function called R the NLM, non-linear regression. I'm not talking about non-linear regression. That is very advanced topic. Will not be even able to talk. I mean, I will not be even able to talk about regression totally in this class because it is beyond uh, the explanation of. Uh, you have to work hard. See here, you have a lot of explanation for this uh, simple linear regression. So there are two types of simple linear and multiple regression. There is another thing, multivariate regression. That is different. In simple linear regression, you have two variable y comma x. Y depends on X and uh, Y can be numerical, X can be group, numerical as well as non-numerical. It is not exactly numerical, non-numerical. Y should be continuous, X should be calibrated. That is actually the principle. Not should be. Both Y and X can be continuous, but in case X can be categorical, but Y cannot be categorical. That is what. See, Y can be can, can, Y need to be always continuous, but X can be either continuous or categorical. I mean, X can be uh, non-categorical and categorical. Y need to be non-categorical. Okay, you cannot have gender for Y. You cannot have uh, satisfaction for Y. You cannot have. There are other techniques in simple linear regression. The Y variable should be numerical non categorical x can be x need to be numerical but it can be categorical that is what i am trying to tell you okay x can be categorical but y cannot be categorical it should be non categorical just like anova in anova y is non categorical x can be categorical but in two sample t test x can be categorical but most of the time it is not accepted so that is what is the fact behind uh, okay here there is a data set i think this is cars we already have that data set uh, there is a plot here you can see the spread actually we have to speak about the correlation then because where correlation ends there regression starts i will just go back to our studio you try to study the theory because i am trying to talk uh, very very influential topics uh, within a couple of uh, minutes uh, which i shouldn't do now correlation, suppose you want to, let, let me show you data cost, head cost. You see you have the speed and distance. And in this case, both Y and X are numerical, non-categorical. You see here, there are no categories. They're all, you know, integers. Now I think uh, should we having, shall we take, uh, okay, melatonin we can take, there is no problem. Uh, head melatonin, okay. Now you have Y, non-categorical x group categorical uh, now correlation so if you don't know what is correlation head sorry health cost you see here left hand side you will find uh, yep got now you see uh, bottom of the documentation you have a lot of uh, no, i'll just uh, thoroughly show you how to find the correlation we have the cards for correlation you can't have you can have categorical but you should have the numerical See here in head uh, melatonin, you got a count, exp, something head fermenter and count. You cannot have this type of data. In case if you have the categories, you need to convert that into the numbers. Maybe count uh, uh, will become one and experiment uh, will become two, something. You have to convert that using it else. I explain you in one of my classes. 
Now I'll try to do this uh, correlation on speed and distance in cos data. Now cos, uh, cos. Now the first one is speed. It doesn't matter the order. Dep there is no dependent and independent in correlation, but it comes in regression. Cos two. Now you see this is what is the Carl Pearson uh, method. I mean Carl Pearson correlation coefficient. You see, it is positive and very strong. Point eight is very strong. Uh, so the both of these variables in cos speed and uh, distance. I think speed distance have very strong association between these two. I mean, they have a very strong associ association with them both. That is uh, data set. I think you have not uh, heard melatonin is a data set. I use that data set to explain you the t-test and ANOVA, in which we have two variables, sleep and group, you see here. Sleep and group. These are the two variables within the data set, melatonin. Melatonin is actually a drug. When this drug is administered to the experimental group, there must be some effect. So here the medical practitioners are trying to study the effect of melatonin on some uh, you know, 30 to 40 subjects. So there are two groups. One is control. The other one is experimental. It's not count, control. The other one is experimental. Control group is a group to which the drug is not given. The experimental group is a group to which the drug is given. Now we are trying to find the difference. Whether this drug melatonin really has any effect on subjects or not, which means patients or not. Is it clear, Ritika, now? You got it? Okay. Now, anybody of you have questions? Any questions? Now I'm talking correlation. So this is how, there is a function called correlation. You need to find the correlation, you need to fit correlation between Obviously, correlation is bivariate analysis. Now, there is another thing called, suppose you find some effect in the sample. Now, we can also do some test on this. Uh, this is only a sample information. This may not be true in the population. If that is the question, now you have another thing called core test. You have, instead of correlation, you need to use core test. Now, this time you will be having a p-value. You see here, p-value is close to zero. So what is the effect? that we see here is not actually a sampling effect. It is not the information of the sample. It can be true even in the population. The p value is uh, very close to zero, which means we, we can reject the null hypothesis that the correlation is zero. By correlation, the null hypothesis is going to be like this. The null hypothesis for correlation is going to be like this. Rho is equal to zero. And uh, rho is population information. And call Pearson R, small r, is statistical information. Now this 0.8, whatever we calculated, that is R. So if R is sample information, we, we call it a statistic. 